And now I present to you James P. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. Greetings. Hello there. You know who I am because you saw the intro to the show. You know where we're located because it's in the intro. So therefore, I don't have to tell you. But I, I will say that uh, welcome to Progressive Discussions. And this is the first of our series that I've titled Progressive Warriors Unite and being that it's the first show I brought a real high quality uh, stainless steel double-edged sword a real sword Progressive Warriors Unite and when I say progressive warriors, I don't just mean people that go online on social media and bitch and moan and complain. I'm talking about people that give their opinions online, are independent free thinkers, critical thinkers, and actually make it their business to vote every time. The most important part of all. Vote. Now, there's a problem. Mm. There's always a problem here, here in modern day America. And the problem is that, and I'll give you an example what the problem is. The problem is that this country has become so damn corrupt and rigged that you don't know you know what's up is down what's down is up you don't know what what's going on you don't know what's real anymore mm -hmm. the sad part is about the top one nineteen eighty four the top one percent yeah George Orwell the top one percent oligarch the oligarchy that we have in this country now the fa the fascism that we have uh, known as uh, capitalism Recently, in Arizona, thousands of uh, 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 voters, thousands of people standing in line waiting to vote, and um, they, um, it was assumed by what these people, maybe they were they had buttons on their 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 shirts, maybe they were holding signs, but it was assumed that they were Bernie Sanders supporters. Someone, some uh, GOP individual that had a, a job of authority in Arizona shut the polls down early and left all those many thousands of people standing on line without ever voting. Now, you assume if you're an American citizen, uh, you have a right to uh, not only to hear and be heard, but you have a right to vote. Well, guess what? These people didn't vote, and Hillary stole the Arizona primary, and uh, I'm still waiting for the Bernie Sanders people to contest it and investigate it. Haven't heard anything yet. Uh, I would have, and, 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 and this goes on and on with all of the suspicious primaries uh, involving Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, uh, with Hillary 
you know, um, mysteriously and unexpectedly winning the primary. Like, for instance, Florida. A huge rally took place in Miami. Bernie lost Florida. Um, uh, where was it? Iowa was extremely, extremely close. It was never contested. So it goes on and on and on. You have Nevada, you know. So, I mean, voter suppression, not only voter suppression by cheating Republicans, mm -hmm. but voter suppression by trying to keep a Bernie down and keep Bernie, uh, trying to face Bernie out of the 2016 campaign altogether. Wait till we get to the convention. And, uh, and you'll see the shenanigans. They, they know deep down that Donald Trump will tear Hillary Clinton apart. Every poll shows the opposite. Well, Hillary Clinton has so much dirt, and Donald Trump is the type to expose every speck of dirt, and he will go for the jugular vein. Okay, I mean, but they don't want a Sanders. Uh, Trump November election because they know what will happen. Bernie won't take any crap. I mean, he'll lower the boom on Donald Trump. Nobody wants nobody wants a Sanders. Well, against anybody. Well, the uh, the uh, the common He's a folk, communist. the the poor, the common folk, the uh, lower middle class, uh, all the nice people. Eighty percent. The nice people want love Sanders. Yeah. The the top That's why. The top twenty percent? No. No. The the crazy lunatic uh evangelical religious nut uh uh tea baggers, the the rednecks, they don't want Sanders either. No. It's communist. Because they deem they first of all, people that don't know their political definitions have demonized the words communism That's great. and socialism. Because they, they don't even know what the hell it is. That's good. They don't even know that capitalism, all these, uh, since since the beginning, has rigged the system against it's them. Yes. Them. Yeah. yeah. They don't know that. No, because uh, uh, capitalism is tied up with mom, uh, Chevy, and apple pie. Perception. And the Bible. Perception. In America. A, a, yeah. a fantasy. Perception, yeah. my friend. Yeah. A fantasy. How you remember when it was see the, the world. Remember when the Soviet Union was around? It was capitalism against the godless Soviet oh, Union. Oh, Nikita Khrushchev and the Cold godless. War, and uh, yeah. And then you had Reagan, Terror, Mr. Gorbachev. You know, first he probably went, well, he was a puppet. He was an idiot. Well, Mr. Gorbachev, tear that wall down. Down he also the tore down the uh, the taxes on the rich, didn't he? Yeah. He did a good job of that. He upped them but, on us, though. But the average the average American doesn't even know that Ronald Reagan was the greatest puppet they ever had, GOP ever had. They don't know that the, the, the reason knew, why the they middle don't class... They know that he raised taxes. They don't even know that okay. the reason why the middle class taxes are so damn high is because of Reagan. Uh -huh. They don't know that. Of course, Reagan, Reagan was a saint. Well, they saint. The, the perception, they made him into a saint. That's correct. They made him into a saint. Uh, just like you can't tell a, a, a loyal Catholic, a loyal Roman Catholic, you can't tell them about the wicked history of the Roman Ooh. Catholic Church. No. I know one person that didn't want to hear it. There you go. They don't want to hear it. Oh, 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 oh don't tell me such things. You're, you're, and then he, he gets up and tries to get in my face. Of course I would have knocked his you ass out. You were an antichrist. An antichrist. So, every, so, you know, it's like, see, as an independent critical free thinker, I wasn't bent out of shape when I learned that everything I was taught by those lying history books in school were were lies and propagandas and half truths. I accepted it. I was surprised, but I wasn't like, oh my god, oh they told me all these lies growing up. Oh my relatives were full of shit and they told me lies. No, I was like I had an attitude like um 
the late greats, you know, Frank Zappa, George Carlin. I, 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 I was happy to learn the truth. I was grateful to learn mm -hmm. things that I never knew before. Mm -hmm. And I accepted it. And I, I, I always had a hunch because of human nature, the wickedness of human nature. I always had a hunch that I was told lies growing up. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I was. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but anyway, l let me get to Chisler's Hall of Shame. Uh-oh. Because we got, got a whopper. First... Burger King? <laughs> no. You got a whopper? No, 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 no. Okay. No. no. That's funny. Hold on. Go. The levity bells. Maybe they'll see action this week. These are old-fashioned, authentic jingle bells. Yeah, from a reindeer. I bet Sank doesn't have those. I'm a reindeer. Oh, by the way, I congratulate uh, Sank's uh, of the Young Toiks, uh, the great video uh, that's on the internet now of him interviewing Bernie Sanders <laughs> in his studio. Great video. Uh, I enjoyed it, even though Bernie was talking very low. He was mm. like, like Clint Eastwood. I don't know, but I heard him. Well, on his stump, you know, they get laryngitis. You know what? When you think about the hours and hours that that man has to shout mm -hmm. and get excited and enthusiastic and how much talking he has to do, mm -hmm. much more talking than his regular job as senator, mm -hmm. which he happens to be doing also, which I have to salute him for doing both, you know, unlike some candidates. Ted Cruz. Ted I mean, Cruz. Uh, Rubio. Excuse me. Yeah. We'll be okay. Can't do his job because he's campaigning, right? Mm. Chris Christie is accused of kind of neglecting New Jersey, right? No, what do you mean, kind of? <laughs> Even though he says he has everything taken care of, he can do both. Mm -hmm. right? Well, he's the superior Chris Christie. Oh, by the way, the Abridgegate trial thing is coming so up, September. right? Huh? Put off till September. What? Put off till September. See, you see how things are in this country? I want to apologize for that noise. The guy next door is That'll doing be before, uh, some c construction work. What? That will be before the election day. September. Oh, mustn't, mustn't interfere with Christie campaigning for the Republican candidate. Mustn't well, interfere. Well, if it ends, it will interfere. Well, yeah. It's in September. But voting is November. Not far away. So, so anyway, Chisler's Hall of Shame, my first inductee, is the company that makes computers that... <laughs> the, you motherfucker. Hold on. You mother... You mother of yeah, all... This helps. You, you mother of all fuckers. You cocksucker. Just while I was going to mention the first inductee. Hey, it works. You know what? It did Somewhat. work. Somewhat. All right. Acer. Acer desktops. You're, it, they are pieces of shit. Hey. The Acer desktop that I purchased recently at Walmart for $249 is a bona fide piece of shit. <laughs> I don't know what kind of CPU is in that fucking thing, but it's slow. And I Doesn't have sound like a big one. And I have Windows 10 that came with that desktop. Mm -hmm. I'm on, I'm on certain, especially social media, and I, I'm trying to navigate. I'm trying, I'm clicking, and I'm waiting for the the left click to respond, the right click. I'm waiting, and I see the little that little Circle. annoying a uh, blue wheel that goes around in circles, the Windows wheel. Yeah. You know, come on, for God's sakes! I have a high speed supposedly high-speed cable modem which I tend to doubt if my speed is, is as high as Optimum claims look at this, what the hell? shame on you Optimum cable company you suck your internet speed sucks but then again so does Verizon uh, suck because I'm not paying a hundred and fifty dollars setup fee for Verizon Fios so we might as well throw Verizon Fios in the Chisler's Hall of Shame too. Pieces of shit. 
I should have bought a desktop from made in South Korea or Japan. So well, it, you gotta before you buy any of that, you look what it says about the CPU. I just felt that they were asking overall. They were asking a little too much for desktops across the board, even Best Buys. You know, I think that um, the retailer, the scumbag uh, Zionist retailers, must have jacked up uh, prices this year. Two forty nine is kind of low, buddy boy. Is it? I paid two forty nine for my uh, Gateway, and it's uh, two point four gigahertz, yeah. I believe. And 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 putting an extra memory stick is is not with eight uh, gonna eight, eight uh, yeah RAM. Like you said, the RAM is is not going to make a whole bit, bit bit of difference if your CPU is a a Tonka toy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Scumbag motherfuckers! I hate retail so much. The most underhanded part of capitalism is retail. Okay, now here's the big one. Uh, a gentleman contacted me recently by the name of Harold. Harold. Very nice man, Harold of, uh, uh, this man was uh, um, central New Jersey, not northern New Jersey. So he contacted me, and I got him on the phone, and I had a long talk with him, and he got screwed over by the state of New Jersey, the uh, New Jersey uh, Department of uh, Human uh, Services, Welfare, SNAP, <coughs> food stamps, you know. Okay, this is what happened to Harold. Harold's collecting um, cash assistance and food stamps. And he also has a Medicaid card. And uh, no, now, thank God, he has an Obamacare card. Mm -hmm. I think he has uh, Horizon of New Jersey. He's very happy with that. He's, and he's also very happy with his food stamps. They gave him a, a, a decent amount. So he's grateful about that. Of course, the welfare is chump change. He gets like a lousy $140 a month. Now, come on, in 2016, that's like your uncle giving you a couple bucks as a kid. And he goes, hey, kid, go buy yourself something. Eh, don't spend it all in one place, right? So anyway, Harold uh, also has a pending Social Security a disability case, and he's represented by Binder and Binder. Hey! You know, the company where the owner has a big hat. Now, uh, that case is, has dragged down so long. So anyway, because, you know, the government finds any feeble, stupid excuse not to give it to you. Uh, so anyway, he, he Harold um, finds out last year that in order to avoid having to go through that stupid job search, uh, a program that the state wants you to go through when you collect welfare and food stamps that Harold had to fill out a specific New Jersey state form have it filled out by his physician and then turn it in so last July of 2015 Harold uh, has goes through the trouble because you know a lot a lot of physicians are very busy people finally he get he gets it filled out Harold makes a special trip, not close by, a special trip to get the form. He drops it off at the Bergen County uh, uh, Department of Human Services uh, location in Rochelle Park, New Jersey. He drops it off. He hears nothing for the, f the following six months for the whole the remainder of the year of 2015 he, he, he receives no reply. Then 2016 rolls around, and he still receives no reply. And he's wondering, gee, what happened to my form? They want me to start all over again, you know, with the, that stupid job search thing. He's got to go to um, unemployment, you know, and, uh, and hear the stupid orientation, the stupid lecture about, you know, how to get a job, how to write your uh, your resume how to go on an interview Bob 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 all the all the bullshit like it's like it's gonna make a damn bit of difference 
you know, getting a job working for the man for chump change. Like, oh yeah, you're gonna really be ahead of the game, right? So, it, it it's it's all a bureaucracy, you know, red tape. So anyway, he he contacts welfare, and uh, he finds out that it's a lot better to send them an email because they get uh, what happened was they get back to you right away, you, you know, uh, as opposed to a voicemail. Mm -hmm. Heaven forbid you should get a real live person when you call. Not when you call. No. And when maybe you they'll get back to you in three days. Maybe. Maybe. If you're lucky. So, voicemails. So, it turns out that his hunch of putting things in writing is often the best policy for contacting someone important. So, he sends a detailed email, and the day after, they contact him back. And they tell him, Harold, we're sorry, but your, uh, we have, we, we found your application, your form, right, in, it's right in front of us from uh, July 2015, and it, it expired. You have to take another form to your doctor and have it filled out and submit it again. He says, wait a minute, you mean to tell me you, you have my application from last July? They said, yes, it's right here. He says, why? Why wasn't it processed? Why did, didn't somebody open it up and process it? Why didn't someone reply to me mm -hmm. and say, we have your, your form and you're denied, you're approved? You know, six months went by, no, yeah, six months went by before this form expired. Should Nobody it, bothered it to... It been a year. Ex well, if it's expired and it has to be renewed every year, it should expire in well, a year. Well, the point the point is Harold Harold got a big head start by by submitting it in July. Yeah. So from July to the end of 2015 is like six months, right? Yeah, five six months. All right. So no, I mean that's plenty of time to process somebody's form. Yeah. So they they. It was like, in their eyes, it was like, oops, I don't think it was an oops. I think they might have deliberately ignored it, so poor Harold, who has a problem, has to uh, go through the aggravation of this stupid job search crap. Uh, I think it, it they create the job search bullshit to m piss people off, so they... You know, so they get a job and they and they go off. And who can we thank for that? Welfare and food stamps. Let me think. Um, Bill Clinton and Newt Gingrich. Ah, 1996. Changing welfare as we know it. Make those goddamn moochers get a job. You're a moocher and a freeloader unless you're rich. If you're rich and you get welfare Sub subsidies, subsidies, yeah, subsidies, that's okay. Fine. All right, but if you're a little guy, there's a problem. That's right. Uh, you know, uh, um, um, just like the, the stupid, idiotic babbling and ranting of Sarah Palin when they questioned her about her daughter getting pregnant a second time, and she made it sound like, oh, it's a blessing, I'm going to be a grandmother again. Mm -hmm. But if it was a poor person who got knocked up, yeah. sterilize that bitch. Sterilizer, Sterilize tub tubal tubal ligation. Uh, 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 she's a she's a brood sow. She she wants to she wants to have babies. That poor woman wants to have babies so she can collect them 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 the welfare checks. Yeah, then it's different if you're poor. So th the point I'm getting at is if you can't trust a legally binding professional form application. What can you trust? I mean, people are really not supposed to be above the law. I mean, huh. if, if you apply for something and you and they tell you, you got to fill out a uh, form uh, 109223 skidoo dash 7. Oh, really? Sounds pretty, pretty serious. Oh, you have it filled out by your doctor and they ignore it. I mean, it, it's like... Dr. Bill, in this country, I think the key word for this show should be accountability because no one seems to be held accountable for anything. 
your your it's your it's your right as an American citizen to vote, but you're deterred from casting your vote. Mm -hmm. This person, Harold, follows the law, follows the rules, fills out the form. His doctor signs it, and it's ignored. There is no accountability. It's like total. It's like it's like total corrupt chaos. Isn't Several it? years ago, you know, shame on you. We found out that Social Security had a policy. The policy was that when a person applied first time for disability, by the they fault. were told no by default. By default, and that. Mm -mm. did away with like maybe 30 percent of people who never came back because the play they're playing a numbers game the average person will see will read that too much trouble and say oops I got turned down yeah. and they they won't they won't appeal it they won't pursue it. they won't pursue it now right. those that uh, know they're being screwed over will pursue it right and then when but they we didn't know it, we were being screwed over until we found out mm -hmm. see mm-hmm mm -hmm. The Labor Department does the same thing with screwing people. You know, SSI periodically sends uh, supplemental security income people a letter saying that they were overpaid and they owe the money back, and it's, yeah. it's nothing but hogwash. There you go. It's nothing but out of the clear blue sky, they'll send them a letter. And by the way, be very careful those that are receiving Social Security disability tear up and throw away anything from the government that says the ticket to work and self-sufficiency program where they tell you don't worry you can work part-time and still collect the your same benefits. amount yeah. of your social security check oh no once you work part-time even if you're cutting paper dolls in a, in a warehouse and you're and you're only putting in like a, like a few hours a week You'll be called in and reevaluated, and you will be thrown off your Social Security disability. That's right, because then you come under the Kidda Law, K I D D A, Kidda Law, which says we're if not, you work, you are not disabled. And we're not kidding about okay. the Kidda Law. We're not kidding, you know. And uh, um, it's like. Um, it's like going. It's like being out in the wild, wild west and, and going before a kangaroo court. You know, <laughs> it's like. Well, these are all it, these little. Uh, it, it's a lawless. Yeah, you know, these are all these little things that Republicans get through to try to uh, cut money going to those programs. Yeah, but the the rich in America sure get their way all the time, don't they? Of course, because they are elites and they are better than us. Right. That's the perception. Okay. Now you have just think about it. You have humanity and the planet Earth. Ooh. You have a handful of multi billionaires in uh, on this side in column 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 A. A handful of multi billionaires in column A. You have the remaining in column B, you have the remaining God knows how many billions of people are on the planet. Regular seven billion eight hundred and ninety right. some right. you know million you know. Yeah, you got the masses. I think there's eight billion people. Alright, let's just call them the asses of the asses of the masses. Uh -huh. In column B. Now based on perception and based on paper money, the handful of multi billionaires in column A, claim and and assume and insist that the uh, the resources of the planet Earth belongs to them. Yes. And and everyone else is using up their, their resources. Their resources. That's correct. Just like the uh, the Jesse Ventura uh, episode of uh, conspiracy theory that was thrown off the air about the FEMA camps. You know th that uh, uh, about the culling of the herd. It's th it's their natural resources because they say so, That's and because true. they're multi-billionaires. Yep. Okay, you're multi-billionaires. Well, 
Forget They're about moochers. forget about God's economics. The rest of us are moochers. Forget about what God says that the wealth of the earth belongs to everyone. Oh well, they're no. They're godless people. They just pretend yeah. that religion. When it's yeah. the, you know, when it's uh when it's uh something that they need. Like right. Republicans. They, it's a cover. Right. It's a front. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a front. Like um you know, like um uh, like let's say a, 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 um, a Korean uh, nail salon that has a massage parlor in the background, in the back, an opium den and a massage parlor going on. It's a front. <laughs> it's a cover. They're not real Christians. They're 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 evil satanic cultists. Mm -hmm. They're they're I idolatry idolaters. They they their god is money. Their god is money, uh, and um, they're guilty of idolatry, and that's it. So, but as far as accountability goes, I'm serious. Uh, the grassroots Bernie Sanders revolution has to start contesting and investigating all this cheating that's going on, you know, between the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign. You know what I mean? This pacifism is going to be the downfall of the American people, the poor, and the planet. You know, the planet is at risk with this... Uh, 2016 campaign because when a conservative gets control of the United States of America there goes uh, the climate change uh, you know the, there goes uh, save, kind of, saving the planet any kind of investigation uh, confrontations any kind of confirmations it won't happen because it's against the Koki brothers there goes and, there's, and their chimney spewing businesses there goes, say goodbye to organic farming. Oh. Say hello to Monsanto's genetically modified poison. Say hello to its pesticides. Say goodbye to the bees. Yeah. Say goodbye to our food supply. Say goodbye to our drinking water because they want to privatize all of that. Say goodbye to the, um, the protec protective ozone layer around the earth. Say goodbye, say goodbye to our planet Earth. Matthew 24. It's, it, the, the conservatives will replace your planet with, with money that they will... Can't eat money. They will find... I'm glad you brought that up. They will find out eventually that you cannot eat money when the planet is dying. Now you see how heavy duty our programs are, and we're f and we're friggin' funny with a, with a sense of humor that that can't be beat. And you see how we get the message across. Let me tell you something. Pro progressive warriors should not just talk the talk. They should walk the walk. Don't cry on social media if you don't vote. I'm not interested in your opinion. You gotta vote. You gotta make it your business to vote. And when somebody tries to deny you your right to vote, you speak up and say, I'm an American citizen and I have a right to vote and I am not going home unless I cast my vote. Well, And this see, is a real sword, by the way. That's what happens when you get the uh, Republicans into power in these states because the state, you know, uh, takes charge of uh, voting and they make all these problems for the voter. Mm -hmm. Okay, deliberately. Because they know they're outnumbered. Oh, jeez. I just, want, I just want to let people know that James P. Madonna is for real. That couldn't even lop off a head. And you could take, <laughs> and you could take that to the bank, brother, to the bank. Well, I haven't, you know, I haven't, haven't I haven't had an, I haven't had a reason to sharpen it. Oh. But I got my shillelagh. All right, let us sink our teeth into these readings. Now that I got a heavy duty. Chisler's Hall of Shame out of the way. Yeah, 
I'm just bringing the sword because it's the series one of our Progressive Warriors Unite uh, uh, Pro, Pro Bernie <laughs> Sanders campaign show. Archaeologists who Archaeologist. scanned the grave yeah. of William Shakespeare say oh gosh they have made a head scratching discovery that he's not gay his nope. skull appears to be missing really researchers used the ground penetrating radar to explore the playwright's tomb in Stratford upon Avon's Holy Trinity Church, Woo! Staffordshire University archaeologist Kevin Coles, who led the study, said they found an odd disturbance at the head end. Oh, that's where they got the name for that wonderful dog, the Staffordshire Terrier. Staffordshire, England, right? Yes. With evidence of repairs, sometime after the original burial. He said the finding supports a claim first made in 1879 mm -hmm. but dismissed as a myth that the barred skull was stolen by grave robbers in the 18th century. It's very very convincing to me that his skull isn't at Holy Trinity at all. Oh, what happened to it? Grave robbers, he just read. <laughs> Were you not paying attention? <laughs> oh, gosh. Sorry about that. Church records say <laughs> Shakespeare was buried in his hometown church 100 miles northwest of London on April 25, 1616. Two days after his death at the age of 52. Oh. Oh, wow. He died young. His wife, Anne Hathaway. Oh, Mrs. Hathaway, uh, Jane Hathaway from the Beverly Hillbillies. Daughter and son-in-law were later buried alongside him. What about, that was Jane Hathaway, right? I mean, uh, the other Hathaway. Holy Trinity's vicar, Patrick Trailer, Taylor, excuse me, said he was not convinced. There is sufficient evidence to conclude that his skull has been taken. Mr. Drysdale was the banker, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. And there are no plans to disturb the grave to find out for sure. We shall have to live with the mystery of not knowing fully what lies beneath the stone. You know, I always wondered, um, with with the scientific advancement, uh, with uh, involving DNA and stem cells and cloning, why can't they just get some DNA from the remains of uh, extinct creatures that that have become extinct on Earth and 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 recreate them in a laboratory? Like, Why do we want them? Like the te No, I'm not talking about dinosaurs. I'm not Anything. talking about. I'm not. Why do we want more you animals? Don't you think there's enough animals in the world yeah, now? Yeah, but don't you think that it's it's sad that one of God's creatures was made extinct no. by man? No. Well, are you that arrogant like those other people that that feel that you? How do you know the dodo was extinct by man? Over harvesting. Or the unicorn. Well, I don't know if the unicorn ever existed, but no, the dodo, I'm t uh, the um, Tasmanian tiger. You know these creatures that have become extinct by man. What about the dinosaurs with the meteor, where uh, they, they all went extinct or whatever? You see, this guy is—he's one of those people persons. I'm not a people person. I I think animals are nicer. Than people. Oh, there's not too many. Rex. There's not too many people on the earth. Oh, but there's too many animals on the earth. So he don't want to bring back the extinct animals. Well, no. that's your opinion. All right. Why not? Why? 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 Because man has made I just to explained. greed has made them extinct. I just explained to you that many of the extinct animals, man had nothing to do with them. 
Well, the ones that were proven to be a victim of over harvesting. Well, which one are those? We got cod today. We got salmon today. We got a lot of that shit today. Yeah, but back then, what the hell? I mean, man was uh, the, uh, the ancient Israelites and uh, said they were burning uh, lambs and goats and, and at the altars. And we still have lambs and goats today. There's a bird, I think it's called the Carolina pa parakeet, that was made extinct. Uh, because they uh, women, they used to put the feathers, I think, in women's hats back in the day. Well, so there you, you go. That be, could, could include man. But, yeah. they, you know, how many other ones? Let's not blame man for everything, you know. There's too many animals. You, you, you just don't want to tinker with things in a lab. That's what it is. <laughs> you see, you, how you, many you, Jurassic Park movies were made? How about The Fly? Tinkering in a lab. What do you think GMOs are? Tinkering in a lab. So you don't you don't think the woolly mammoth should be uh, should be brought back? Hell no. They said Who the hell ca cares? They said it can't. I care. Who cares about the woolly mammoth? I care about the woolly mammoth. Well, you care about them, but they go somewhere then where you know where you can enjoy you, them. You didn't like uh, Sam Sham and the Pharaoh singing Wooly Bully. Hell you have no. you have a problem with woolly animals, don't you? Yeah. No, I just don't care about a woolly mammoth. Everything we discussed politically on this show in this series is part of capitalism in a conch shell. There's the conch soaking that conch energy from the briny deep. I like to send a lot of uh, Hillary supporters and and teabaggers to Davy Jones's locker for sure. All right, continue. Donald Trump is a political gargoyle. <laughs> it's a demagogue, a demagargoyle, right? Sitting atop his foul cathedral, spewing his bigoted and megalomaniacal pro proclamations. I, I, I saved the banner and I had a picture of Chucky from the horror movie on one side and then I had a picture of Trump and he, they were making the same face. And he says, "This is uh, Chucky. Is is uh, Donald Trump grown up? Donald Trump is Chucky, all grown up. <laughs> now he is encouraging his acolytes to riot because some people are beginning to push back oh, against his candidacy. He wants them dem dog gun carriers to feel free to bring dem dog guns <laughs> to the Republican National Convention in in Cleveland." This year, <coughs> excuse me. Oh bless. You. Yeah, yeah. Oh, could you imagine that? I guess they want to shoot the protesters. As bad as he is, Damn his God. supporters are worse. Well, of course, you, you've seen them. They're, I don't know. They don't even know why they're fighting and and beating people up. They, they. I, I don't think they really know what's really going on in this country. How it's run. Well, bingo! I don't think they don't even know. Do you think know. anybody down in Kentucky and Wolf County understands how the hell the goddamn country is run? If you don't know your 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 common basic geography of the United States, then there's a good chance you don't know how this country is run, <clears throat> how things operate. So how the hell could you know? How could you make an intelligent decision on voting? You know, well, it's obvious that they're lacking brain cells. You know, I think Trump has put a hex on them to erase common sense and good judgment. I know they're angry. Everyone gets angry but when the government does something they don't agree with. But they're easier to control when they're sort of out of control. That's probably what, what Trump likes. But Trump is not the solution. He won't be able to fulfill those outrageous promises he makes. Because this is a nation of laws, not of men. Do his supporters think that the rest of the nation is just going to fall down and roll over for Trump? Yeah, it's not a it's it's not a military dictatorship. It's not a monarchy with Trump at the head. All of the Trumpsters. At best, take a quiet moment and reflect. 
on the consequences of putting a narcissistic hustler into the White House. Hey, when he said his favorite book was the Bible, I bet that book he was waving was the, the Art of the Deal. <laughs> which, well, which is his Bible, right? Absolutely. But he knows nothing about the Bible. He knows he only quoted one scripture. Well, no conservative really knows. Well, of course not. The Bible. But they carry it around and they thump it and they push it in your face. Because if they knew the Bible, they would see that the God of the Bible is very progressive, and and, and you know, and not. Well, it does not think like them. If you're using the word progressive in a non-political way, non-politically, yes, because God has nothing to do with politics. He no, is a no. king. No, I mean he is a king. I mean, like. Um, uh, mostly, the, it's mostly the whole n New Testament seems to be uh, seems to reflect the beliefs of progressive people, liberal people. You know what I mean? The compassion, well, a, a decent people, the compassion, the you empathy. A, you don't have for, to be liberal or progressive. You know, decent people. Yeah, like like yeah, people with a conscience. What is, well, what is the uh, not sociopath? What is the golden rule? Well, if you ask the Republicans, it's uh, whoever has the most gold rules. But the real one says, do unto, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Which includes... If you see your brother in want, you must help him. If a starving man uh, uh, steals uh, some food from, from your marketplace, do not throw him in prison. You must treat him differently. Feed him, if he if he is without clothes. Clothe him. Clothed did, 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 did him. Yeah. Clothed it. Clothed it. Yeah. That's for the golden rule. Yeah. Like the uh, rule. The right wing knows nothing about that because no. they are moochers. Therefore, they are using the Bible as a front, like yeah. we said before. Yeah. When historians look back and analyze what happened to America in this election cycle, I believe they will determine that the mass media has influenced the direction of the election as never before. Before the first real vote has been cast, they have afforded more free time to Donald Trump than all <coughs> candidates combined in the election cycles of 2012 and 2016. Exposure increases popularity more than ideas ever could. It hearkens me to my days at a record company. The key to sales was airplay, radio. The more airplay, the higher the sales. And what stupid, ridiculous commercials we see here in the United States. They're very annoying, very, especially car dealers. Even a less than mediocre record can fly up the charts with enough exposure. Now remember, apply this also to the newsletter. Yeah. Okay, it's the same thing. Nobody will buy or want the newsletter if they don't know about it. Well, that, an old man told me this back in the uh, early 1990s. If, if nobody knows you exist, how on earth can they know your product on the internet right. or, or in the world, period? Right. How do they know? get to know your product? Remember, there was payola back then. The companies paid the disc jockeys to play their record so the sales could go up. You know, it's like it uh, takes something unimportant, like uh, like uh, uh, honey, uh, honey flavored uh, Cheerios. Hey. You know, or 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 Lucky Charm cereal, or Cocoa Puffs, or something. You know, advertise not, them on Saturday morning cartoons. Well, they well, they want to target kids. Yeah. So kids can nag their parents to buy this poison. Yeah. Five dollars for a box of po uh, of sugar. You might as well say sugar and white flour and artificial coloring to make it look, you know, 
appetizing, fruity. While watching the yeah. coverage of the Brussels terror tragedy on television, I was shocked to hear that Trump would be presenting his analysis after the next commercial break. Well, we're going to do a moment of silence for that. This is really horrible. Hillary Clinton was approached to ask her opinion. She wisely declined, not wishing to inject politics into a horrific tragedy. Not so Trump! He used his platform to enhance his chops on terrorism. When does he not keep his mouth shut? He has no legitimate solution. Just some vague plan to ban all Muslims from our shores. Oh, he wanted to close down mosques, remember? And patrol the neighborhoods. For, for people... He wants to patrol Muslim neighborhoods. Any, I think anybody with... with uh, anybody who's not white he basically <laughs> wants to keep an eye on. I love women. Women love me. Who's Trump said this? Yeah, that's correct. I love Hispanics. Hispanics love me. <laughs> Gaddafi said that too. I mean, you see what these people did to him. Well, um, 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 what's his face? Um, Saddam Hussein says, what can I say? My people love me. They they asked him about all the, the pictures of him all over Iraq, you know, the billboards with his face on it. What can I say? Statues. The people love me. My question is, why was he even approached for his opinion and afforded even more free television time? It seems to me akin to the psychology of craning your neck to view a fatal car wreck. The rubberneckers, yeah. Unfortunately, the car wreck could be our country. <clears throat> you know what? And the planet will go with it. If, if, if any time you have a corporatist right-winger in charge of the free world, don't be so sure that the people that are demonized are truly, truly the enemy. And I'm talking about how they demonize Vladimir Putin. Don't be so quick to believe mainstream media. You know, I hear, I heard even the BBC has gone corporate. BBC is supposed to be owned by the government. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. Yeah. Now. Um, we're gonna go for a break, right? Yep. Right now, all right. Let me let's do a moment of silence for the victims of Brussels. Moment of silence. We use the shillelagh and the sword. Okay, tragedy. I want to say greetings to my Facebook group administrators, Mr. Saj Shaboyle, um, Mr. Uh, Mick Von Raven, Anthony Alora. okay, um, Paul Neef, okay, um, I want to give greetings to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. <coughs> and, um, oh, and also my good friend uh, and a master organic farmer yeah. and a nutritional and fitness consultant, um, Mr. Uh, uh, Stephen. Santangelo, Mr. Stephen R. Santangelo, Stephen R. Santangelo, Santangelo, I send you greetings. Um, and that's it. Um, I also want to congratulate, uh, as far as old school ancient warrior fitness goes, the man who has advanced 
much more rapidly than anyone else in the uh, the fitness field I'm talking about old-fashioned non-steroid non-cheating fitness uh, along with uh, uh, Stephen R. Santangelo I, I want to congratulate Mr. Uh, Helder Gandra okay of Portugal Helder Gandra uh, Indian Clubs Portugal and I would like to also give send greetings and congratulations uh, to a very uh, mm -hmm. exceptionally fine man and uh, fitness expert uh, in uh, in I believe uh, Eastern Australia, an Iranian gentleman, Eastern Australia. Iranian gentleman Kashi of Azurkane, Australia, and his organization Persian Yoga. Mm -hmm. Just do a Google search. Okay, mm -hmm. give kudos to all of them. Now we're going to lunch, and we will hear from our um, commercial voiceover artist, William Hamilton Morrow the third, and then we'll be back. Jack, that's right. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. All right, we're back. We're back. We're back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow the third, the third, for doing promo and commercial. Now, oh man, am I full? Boy, I had a good lunch. I had Genoa salami with provolone cheese, with spicy horseradish mustard on twelve grain bread. And a banana. And uh, the Reverend Dr. Bill ate. Who I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what the fuck he ate because uh, it looked like burger a and ham. What a combination! Yeah. You know, I'm loaded. Well, I can't play with the flag because you know we had to open the door, so we're going all natural. Now, but anyway, Republicans, right-wingers, you know, they always brag about how great and wonderful the United States is and how, how living in America is like the dream of everybody. You know, meanwhile, no Scandinavian is that stupid to want to move here. Oh, 
Republicans even say we're m much better than Scandinavia. Mm. How do you figure that? Well, maybe if you're rich and you don't pay any taxes, you're better than Scandinavians. But when you think about it, the average American, what do you have to show for it? You spend your whole life working for the man, and your salary is always way below the cost of living. So when you end up old and ready to retire, what do you have to show for it? Not a hell of a lot. If you can ever retire. If you can ever retire. So I don't know where they get this concept about America being so freaking great and superior to everybody else. I think it has to do with if you're rich, the perception. The system is rigged for you. Yeah. If you're rich. But what does that have to do with those people down in Kentucky and Wolf County? They believe it too. They believe I don't know how they originally were brainwashed. But you know, even a even a dumb dumb ignoramus eventually you learn not to keep on shooting yourself in the foot yeah. you know you don't after your five toes <laughs> you don't have to be brilliant to know that you don't mess with the skunk you don't mess with the porcupine and you don't shoot yourself in the foot yeah. you know you don't have to be smart now if you keep on voting for a Republican and um, your life gets worse and worse and you're already living in a shack, why on earth do you continue to vote for the Republican? Because of those baby killers. Yeah, Secular because, because it's, could be, it's religion. It's their religious cult, the evangelical religious cult that maybe creates these people, makes these people vote Republican. It joins them together, yes. Because they're worried about what God's going to do to them much more than than putting a roof over their head and food on the table. Well, the, they don't get the idea that the big thing that God doesn't like from the Bible is you having the wrong God. Because God, right. the Bible, is a very jealous God. Hey. Very jealous. They, they're so worried about fertilized eggs. They don't didn't don't they realize that God has smited many a people in the Bible, in the Old Testament? Hey, they're gonna roll around eggs tomorrow. Oh, that's right. You know, I forgot all about that. It was Good Friday mm, yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. But I. Yeah. Nothing tomorrow. Uh, supposedly is Ishtar. That's worship right. of Ishtar. Wait a minute. I ha I totally lost track of time. Oh. This is our special. Not only is this our Progressive Warriors Unite show, Series 1, but this is our Happy Pagan Ishtar for 2016. Thank you for reminding me, Dr. Bill. Pagan Easter. Pagan, you know, I, I got to play your uh, your reading of, um, I think you did two pagan two Easter them, readings. Yes. Two of them. Jesus was not, did not die on Friday. Friday. And the other one is uh, the Easter lie, I Easter. Think. Or just Easter. I think it said just Easter, because yeah. that's the one I printed in the mm -hmm. newsletter now. Yes, I will so. take those readings, which happens to be on the internet. All right. If you mm -hmm. go to uh, our YouTube channel, Progressive Discussions or Mega Life 21, you will see them, the readings. And uh, yes, so happy pagan Ishtar to all you fools out there that think that uh, uh, um, coloring Easter eggs and 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 bunny bunnies. bunny rabbits. Uh, have something to do with the uh, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Now, uh, <clears throat> there was a documentary on um, the Travel Channel. Um, there's this a man. Um, I for, it's it's a relatively new show. I mean, to me, it is. And there's a this is archaeologist who travels the world, um, and. Um, he happened to be in uh, Jerusalem in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, 
so if I'm pronouncing it right. And uh, that, that supposedly was the site of Jesus' crucifixion. I think that's like the center of the church. And the um, Gotha was where he was crucified. The archbishop that was in charge of that church was a uh, um, archbishop of the Greek Greek Orthodox religion, and he claims that he has safekeeping. He has in a vault some pieces of the original cross, the original church. I'm not the original church. The original the wood from the original crucifixion of Jesus the tree yeah the the uh, they called it the true cross now supposedly it wasn't really a cross that's right they said it it, it, it could have been an X you he know an X shape you know because you know how they could tell it wasn't a cross by they had a 2,000 year old heel bone with a nail that the Romans used going through the heel bone and after careful examination they said this could not have happened if the person was crucified on a cross because it wasn't it was a tree you would have to cross you would have to take the two feet and sort of like put one over the other Hammer the nail. and and the way the the angle and the way the nail was was through the heel bone that the only way it could have been done is if the person was with their legs were spread and they were on an X a tree the Bible says a tree so the the two arms a pole. the two arms were suspended from above that's correct a, a pole let's just say a pole yeah okay <clears throat> so uh, Frank Costanza's Festivus pole is more accurate than the uh, than Christianity's cross and all the fancy that pole is made out of metal that was an aluminum pole yeah uh, um, and the um, the cross they took the image of the cross and the Roman Catholics and all the Orthodox churches made all kinds of fancy artistic Renaissance designs out of that cross mm -hmm. and um, what can I tell you? The cross has nothing to do with Christianity, or God, or Jesus. You told me that if you okay. wanted to pick a... It comes from history. If you wanted to pick a visual symbol, you said the fish. Fish. Christian. Now, that, that fish, does that represent uh, Peter's boat when Jesus made all the fish jump into it? I don't know if it has anything to do, and I don't, I don't know if it was Peter's boat. No, in other words, I don't the, know who owned the boat. In other words, the origin of the connection between Christianity. I have no idea. The origin, the connection between Christianity and the fish. Maybe when he divided the fish in the bread to feed the five thousand. He took fish know. and why would he take fish and make bread out of fish? It didn't make bread, it fish and bread. Oh, fish and bread. Yeah. So There's only a couple of loaves and a couple of fish and 5,000 people hungry. So what you're saying is, instead, of, instead of a glazed smoked ham, instead of a glazed smoked ham or lamb chops, a fish sandwich, a filet of fish sandwich is a much more accurate Easter dinner. Easter meal because Maybe. the people ate fish and bread so what do you well, do now you make a fish sandwich that's Those what are two I two different uh, separate events that's what I had last night I had a, a filet I had a codfish sandwich with with tartar sauce on it oh, so you could have had uh, fish and chips which is nothing but mayonnaise or uh, relish you know pickle relish and a little lemon juice. That's tartar sauce. Cocktail sauce is uh, horseradish and ketchup. Yeah. That's cocktail sauce. So now you know how to make your own. <clears throat> My recipe this f for breakfast today was very successful. What I did was I took uh, organic K 
quinoa and amaranth, equal parts of both, which is two tablespoons of each. That makes a quarter of a cup. Then I took a tablespoon of chia seeds. Then I took a, t a teaspoon of uh, um, cinnamon powder. And I took uh, about a half a teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt. And then I added uh, chopped de dehydrated mangoes from the Philippines. Dried mangoes as a sweetener. And I, I, I put it on low and I uh, simmered it for a long time and it was absolutely delicious and talk about a nutrient dense breakfast I don't think you can get more nutrient dense than that with those two pseudo grains amaranth and quinoa mm -hmm. and the Himalayan pink salt but anyway I just wanted to share that that we being that we were talking about food and religion, and Easter, and Christianity. Mm -hmm. You dig where I'm coming from, brother? So now we're gonna go back to the readings. Let's see how much banter I used up of the show. Oh, crap. The writer's statements are typical of the all-inclusiveness of the radical left where boundaries don't exist. The catechism, catechism of the Catholic Church is a compendium of its moral principles, standards, teachings, and traditions, including sexuality, marriage, and priests. This is based on God's revelations described in the Old and New Testaments and from the lives and testimonies of the faithful over 4,000 years of salvation history. Not by the lame vagaries and faulted practices of feeble governments. The church has never rejected gays, but will never accept same-sex marriage because it violates church law. Just have them get married in a civil ceremony. The mayor of the town or a judge. Let them get married, but just not by clergy. The fixation on women priests never stops because the church remains true to itself. Have, have women become ministers? Could they become ministers? Oh, they can't. Yeah. Oh, Protestant churches won't let them become ministers? No, we're talking about the Catholic Church. Oh, okay, I'm just wondering if they're allowed, you know, in um, like non-denominational... Yes. Oh, okay. The Anglicans, they can have the church, uh, 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 women, as vicars, etc. Yeah, okay. Christ chose 12 apostles which are still represented today by the College of Bishops. The church is bound by his choice, so ordination of women is not permitted. So Mary Magdalene, even though she shows up on the, what is that, Leonardo da Vinci painting, The Last Supper, she was not... What? She was not technically... Um, what, the, what the hell are you talking about? A disciple? Have you ever seen... Uh, she is not in that picture. She's it. She's not in that picture? No. You better take a look at it again. You better take a look at it. There's only him and the 12. Well, then how come... At a big, long table. How come all the documentaries show Mary Magdalene in that painting? Don't ask me, but she ain't in the painting. Look it up on Google. Creepers, 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 creepers. They made a movie about it with Tom Hanks. They can a make a movie about anything. They Angels and be, demons. Uh, uh, they don't have to uh, adhere to the book or the Bible. I'm gonna, you know what, this jabroni over here. I'm gonna take a look at that Da Vinci painting there online. There are three. I believe there are three, three Jesus movies out right now at the same time. How many of them are accurate? I don't know. I haven't seen. Them. Well. Well, Hollywood always uh, embellishes and 
you know, changes things. Oh, kidding. You know, they, um, um, like the movie about uh, the O.J. Simpson trial, <clears throat> the people that were involved that are still alive say that it's not accurate. You know, it's, it's, it's made for Hollywood. Christ right. chose 12 apostles, which are right. still represented today by the College of Bishops. The church is bound by his choice, and so ordination of women is not permitted. All right, then that's it. That's their rule. That's the church. If you want to be um, a pastor and you're female, don't be a, don't try to be a Catholic priest. Be something else. Go to another uh, a Protestant church or be a non-denominational Christian pastor. And you know, <clears throat> this Bernie Sanders supporter is sorrowful. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm pissed. I'm not sorrowful. I'm pissed. That the letter writer has a lack of imagination and a puny amount of American can-do spirit. Can-do? U.S. Senator Robert Kennedy said it best when he noted the need for men to dream of things that never were. Wait a minute. To dream of things that never were and ask why. You know, that was very good. Why not? That was a very good impersonation. And I, you know what? He just reminded me of something. I think Robert Kennedy Jr. would be an excellent choice for Bernie Sanders' cabinet. Maybe even a VP running mate. I believe he's dead. No, no, no. Ro well, what was the one in the airplane? No, that was John F. John F. Kennedy Jr. You sure? That was JFK Jr. and his girlfriend. Or wife, or whatever. No, we're talking about Robert Kennedy Robert Jr. Kennedy. Yeah. is okay. a is a um, you know I'm not sure if he holds public office or I think they 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 I see his videos very. He's often. a senator. He's a senator, Robert yeah. Kennedy Jr. Yeah, Mass. Yes, so. Yeah. Calling Sanders' goals unrealistic is just a political ploy of his opponents in an attempt to wean voters away from their best interests. Public high schools exist along with private prep schools. Why not public colleges along with private institutions of higher learning? Equal opportunity is not a risk-benefit ratio of investors who prey on mortgagees, go bust, and get bailed out by citizens without a voice, is it reasonable for corporations to evade taxes and pay their CEOs a salary 1,000 or 2,000 times higher than their employees? Yeah, the paper pushers, the big parasitic bloodsuckers. Why shouldn't Wall Street <coughs> be called to account as surely as taxpaying workers can be subject to IRS auditing. The reality is that there are too many educated burglars discussing the issues of the day to no avail. The problems of the world cannot be solved by skeptics. We need more men like Bernie Sanders. Just listen to the news and see how this great country of ours has changed. Duh. Don't go by the mainstream media. There are groups such as ISIS and Al-Qaeda that want to destroy what so many of our young military men and women have died for. Our right to be free. That is true. How can you be free if you're working for the man? Working Don't the they man. get it? Every night and day. Working for the man. You're not gonna, you're not gonna be free. You know who told me that when I was a kid? Uh, uh, Ray, Ray's son from Elwards, the health food store. Yeah. He told me as long as you're working for somebody else, you'll never get ahead. True. The man. You're working for the man in a capitalist system. You'll never be ahead because your salary will never keep up, or has not kept up with the rate of. Um, inflation and the cost of, of living. 
our politicians from the president on down to all our representatives in Washington are more concerned about pleasing the special interest groups that keep funding their re-elections than our rights as citizens. I am old enough to remember presidents, regardless of their political affiliations, who put the safety and rights of our citizens first. Franklin Roosevelt, Harry Truman, Dwight Eisenhower, John Kennedy, even Ronald Reagan. Allow these radical groups to flourish even though their strongholds are in other parts of the world. The answer is a resounding no. <clears throat> these groups want to destroy us and our way of life and we need to take affirmative action to destroy them before they destroy us. I like this guy. He's, he, he is a proactive, progressive warrior. We this need a president and representatives in Washington who will take positive action to eliminate Crap. these radical groups and to stop their barbaric slaughter of innocent people. Well, you know, when you mentioned um, <coughs> um, Kennedy, Robert Kennedy Jr. before, yes. uh, it made me think of how um, Hillary Clinton might have stole the uh, Massachusetts, Massachusetts primary from Bernie Sanders when her husband uh, Bill showed up at four polling areas to cause a public scene and uh, make it difficult for people to get in the booth and vote. Now, where the hell, being that they're both very progressive people, where the hell was uh, Robert uh, Kennedy Jr. and Elizabeth Warren uh, when this primary took place? I didn't see their faces out there campaigning for Bernie Sanders. I didn't see their outrage, uh, public outrage about uh, Bill Clinton doing this strange I'm telling you it's strange it's what the elite strange. can get away with isn't it but there's isn't a, it? they talk the talk uh, and show how progressive they are Elizabeth Warren Robert Kennedy jr. Um, you know um, Al Franken hey let's see if Al Franken shows up on Bernie Sanders campaigns in Minnesota if you don't see Al Franken side by side with Bernie Sanders, you know something's wrong. Or if you see uh, Al Franken alongside uh, Hillary Clinton, you know, you know something is really wrong. Because Al Franken's books and his talk show when he was on Air America... I think he already endorsed Bernie. Oh, okay. okay. I believe oh, so. Good man, good man. But I'm just saying... The people that are endorsing Bernie have to be out there with Bernie. You know, you, you, you should be progressive warriors, proactive, proactively involved. Like, what? It, like this gentleman's letter. One of the first things I read in the Sunday record is the column, How They Voted. I check to see if there were any environmental issues voted on in Congress and look to see how Representative Scott Garrett, Republican of Juan Page, oh, that motherfucker. and Rodney P. Freelandheisen, Republican Harding, voted, expecting they would vote against any issues for improving our environment. I know Wantage, New Jersey. It's up in the ponies. Everybody, it seems like everybody who lives in, in the boonies, in, 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 in the sticks, so to speak, tends to be right-wing and evangelical. Expecting that they would vote against any issues for improving our environment. And sure enough, they were consistent. They both voted for a bill, H.R. 69, to allow higher toxic emissions from the power plants that are fueled by coal and refuse. Well. Wow. Which emit more pollutants than normal coal. Gotta make that money, uh, even though 
uh, our planet is at risk and our survival. So they are. Now, in their defense, maybe they don't really feel this way and are just following their party platform. Yeah. But in either case, I ask myself, <clears throat> don't Republicans breathe the same air, drink the same water as the rest of us? And if they do, why do Republicans so consistently vote against improving them? Their idolatry, their obsession and love of money. I guess their greed turns them into like sociopaths where they don't have any... They they just shut it out of their mind, I guess, the, the what's happening to the planet. Or they feel that their money would make everything right if the planet goes downhill, but... They how, say it doesn't exist. How wrong it... Well, it they say. Well, exist. they say it doesn't exist. Either they out of sight, out of mind. How, that is true. But how do you turn your back on the world's most prominent scientists and ignore scientists? They've been doing it for years and years and years. Because the science. They the, did it to Galileo. So, but what? But what the scientists are saying doesn't that cut into their profits? Yes. Or they're stealing. That's why they ain't adhering to because it. Because their obsession with money. How much money is enough? People. I don't know. If you're a multi-billionaire, how much money is enough to be content? How much money do you need? How many private jets do you need? How many uh, beach houses do you need? How many limousines? How many Ferraris do you need? Well, King Solomon had a lot of moolah. So it's it's like it's like really it's really like such a miserable. Seven hundred wives, three hundred concubines. So so there are people who are really that selfish, I guess. I would assume so. Selfish, egomaniacal. Hey, perception is is strange. I I I just I want to make an example. It's not political, but it's an example. I've seen photographs of some of your big female uh, so-called beauty queen celebrities without their makeup. Hey. Uh, 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 Cameron Diaz, uh, um, Kim Kardashian, Jennifer Lopez, and others, and many others. I've seen the before and after. I've seen they look like plain, washed out, average females. They are created. They're the illusion of the stardom. They, I think in a lot of cases the establishment, Hollywood, whatever you want to call it, makes the star. They pick, they choose the person, they make the celebrity. And then people have this, with their fantasy and their imagination, they put this human being on a lofty ivory tower and they buy their product and they buy their music. And they just they just make this person bigger than life. When in reality they the person might not be that bright in most cases. Or the person uh, may not be all that in terms of looks. Perception. Your editorial on Donald Trump could not have been any more anti Trump. People know where the record stands, but really, the Republican Party is trying everything to derail Trump, which in itself is disgusting. The media don't help. Why go through the charade of primaries and caucuses to then pick the person you want? Unbelievable. It's rigged. It's cheating. Cheating is allowed in America. If the Republican Party does succeed, in stopping Trump, I would have to vote Democratic, which is in itself unbelievable. Oh, you poor thing! You have to you have to make the right decision for once in your life. Uh, you know, I, I I made a suggestion on Bernie Sanders' page, saying saying that Bernie Sanders should create a new political party called the People's Progressive Party. PPP, 
the peoples, not just the progressive party, but the peoples. We need to get rid of parties. Well, parties are the problem. Well, people like to feel like they belong to something. Fine. You know what I mean? They want Fine. to belong to something. Belong to themselves. Nah, people are not okay. too crazy about that. Exactly, they, because they, they're insecure. They, they need. They like that. They need the worship of something they, else. They like that little. They like that okay. little bat cave, that little cubby hole, that little chicken coop, you know, with the fireplace in the corner and everything. You know, they they want to be. They want to belong to something. Well, tangible people like tangible things. That belonging is a problem in itself. Well, I don't think a, prog a People's Progressive Party with Bernie Sanders at the helm would be bad. I think it'll be pretty damn good, you know, if if you don't allow it to get corrupted by money. Okay, you have to lay down the rules uh -huh. of what the party is about. And then when you're gone? Some, some crooked bastards corrupts it. That's correct. <laughs> like they did to Herbert W. Armstrong's uh, church and magazine, right? Sexist, racist, bigot, fascist, Nazi, bully, lunatic, idiot, tyrant, misogynist. These words have become part of the left's war with Donald Trump. That sounds like your typical pure right-wing Republican to me. What's ironic are the self-righteous columnists who are against at Trump's rhetoric, aghast, excuse me, yet never consider their own vitriol. Are they concerned their fiery words may be responsible for the violence of the protesters? Yeah, it is they doubtful. Rile, they rile them up. But it might help for them to see themselves as others see them. Interesting. We got time for uh, one of those uh, one of those Dendar uh, uh, funny uh, dear AB. Uh, I ain't got one here. Or no. Angie, Angie Dickens, uh, Emily. What the fuck is her name again? Uh, Amy. Angie okay. Dickens. Amy Dickinson's. <laughs> All right. Well, All if right, you got something is, else, read it. Uh, so this is too long. This is too long. I say. Is there is there environmental or animal? Uh, um, I have no idea. Um, reading because there's always something in the media about animal abuse. Oh, I have something here. I have something. Oh, you do have something. Yes, I do. One for the road for Happy Pagan Ishtar 2016. Amy Dickinson. Oh, you found one. I am an older man. Hey, I'm an older man. Hey. Married for a number of years. Not a terrific marriage, but I've lived it so long, I'm just used to it. It's, it's comfortable. But that's another story. Yeah, well, you know, you got to work hard at monogamy. You know? Both people, not just the man. Oh, God, either some of these women let themselves go. It's, it's, it's despicable. Despicable, I tell you. A few years ago, I met a single woman. Oh. We started talking. One thing led to another, and we spent the night together. Wasn't that a song? One thing leads to another. That was from the 80s, right? It had been well over four years since my wife and I had relations. Is she fat with curlers in her hair? I've carried on a sort of relationship with this woman. She's now demanding I come to be with her. Amunamu, she wants a, a commitment now from the married man. Ooh. I know it's just my money she wants. The Gumara. The Gumara wants from more. Things she has said. Oh. She's a gold digger. I want to get her out of my life. But she has threatened to tell my wife everything if I don't get my act uh, together. He's, he's deep now. He's deep in doo-doo. 
I can't come clean. It would kill my wife. Her health is poor. I know I'm a stupid jerk for getting into this, but I've never done this before and I feel so guilty about it. Why, if a man knows a woman's after his money, why does he comply? I know what you're gonna say, to get in her pantaloons. Amy's answer. Do not let this person blackmail you. Well, it's easy to say. You need to own this. And find a way to tell your wife. That. And deal with the fallout in your marriage. In a way that is respectful and loving. If you don't tell your wife, the blackmailer's threats will keep you off kilter. And your lie and the secrecy will continue to affect your marriage and your well-being. Yeah, it'll make things worse in layman's terms. Do not negotiate or discuss this further with the person threatening you. Oh, the person who's trying to blackmail you will, uh, once they get a stronghold, They'll go farther, and farther, and farther, and farther, you know. It's like um, the two in the Twilight Zone episode, the two guys in the desert carrying bars of gold, you know. Oh, the price of one sip of water just went up. It's now two bars, and three bars, and four bars of gold for one, for a half sip. And so on, and so on, and so on, you know. Got your butt of short hairs. Anyway, thank you for joining us for this uh, first of hopefully many series. Uh, Progressive Warriors Unite. It is a pro uh, Bernie Sanders campaign 2016. Good versus evil oriented series. And this is also Happy Pagan Ishtar 2016. Have a good one. We'll see you next time. Oh, uh, was spring officially here the last last Saturday? Sunday. Oh, it was Sunday. Mm. Oh, so this is technically our, also our first springtime 2016 show. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this is this is really a humdinger of a show. You know what I mean, man? I'm I'm excited. I'm. I'm Totally flabbergasted. Seven bells for this great show. Beautiful. We'll see you next time. One thing leads to another. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.